Alright guys, such crap again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far with all the Sib drama seemingly going down yesterday behind the scenes with that Cloud9 organization. More is coming out of that Cloud9 team. Rumor has it Dereal, one of their head coaches over the last couple of seasons, is going to be gone potentially to Falcons, according to Zuma last night. That's a very interesting development. What does it mean for Hydra, given that Hydra and Dereal have been very close over the last several years? Could they potentially look at trying to sign Hydra over the next couple of seasons? And also, what does it mean for Cloud9? Are they gearing up to bring Scrappy to the team and saving up all the money they can to make that happen. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Black Ops 6 of course is well the first weekend of the beta is done. It's coming back in a couple of days time. This was interesting to note. There's like a skin in the game that looks kind of like this. Don't know what's going on there. But um, yeah here we go. It's like some sort of default looking skin anyway that looks a little bit like it may well end up being the blueprint skin they tend to use for some of these CDL team skins. We'll see how that goes. There was also this here from Drew, another kind of designer who's worked with Optic and Envy for several years, been let go, right? So we've seen these Optic layoffs happen over the last couple of weeks. It's mainly, it seems, been from the design and the production team perspective. And look, we know that Optic are, I wouldn't exactly say downsizing precisely, but that is kind of true, I guess, on some level, naturally, when you see stuff like this. They've gone from that headquarters in the heart of downtown Dallas that Envy used to have. Now they're going back to the hex quarters in Frisco. They're letting a few people go. You know, it's eSports. Unfortunately, it is what it is. But wishing the best for all involved. And we're going to discuss more a bit on that in a second in terms of the monetary situation when we get to this Cloud9 stuff. But let's talk about this. A couple of you guys pointed this out to me I thought was pretty fascinating. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether Nasty's bio was different before. But let's put two and two together here. Nasty has LA Thieves in his name. He has LA Thieves in his header. So, but he no longer has, I imagine, LA Thieves in his bio. I mean, it's possible that it was never there, but... That seems pretty unlikely to me, given he played for this team for a whole year. So um, it seems like Los Angeles Thieves in Nasty's bio may have just been removed. And if that's the case, then obviously you can kind of put two and two together in terms of what that might mean for his prospect on that roster going forward. It's obviously been a discussion point with Thieves. Will they make a change? Are they considering doing something and upgrading in various roles? I think the reality is Optic and FaZe are very good. They are almost certainly going to stick it out unless something crazy happens with this scrap situation. Cloud9 are looking to get better. If you're Thieves, do you want to rest on your laurels? That team was very good at the end of the season, but I definitely think there's a world where that team of, you know, ghosty, nasty, crump, Joe deceives goes into next year and again is kind of middle of the pack at the start of the season and tries to make some progress forwards. So I understand the feeling around trying to upgrade if there are options out there and especially given that Scrap, but also let's just say Sib is on the market and we'll discuss him in a couple of minutes that is something that might at least be considered. Just for example, on the crimp side of things, the other player that theoretically might well be on the chopping block if they are going to make a change, he's still got thieves very much so there in the bio, right? So thought that was interesting to look at and think about, really. There's also the conversation around someone like Illy. I mean, we saw this Emily a couple of weeks ago now discussing his imminent return for the 2025 season, where he might go, I don't know. But um, if you're thieves and you have the option to bring Illy in for nasty, do you do it? Or do you not? I think there's arguments either way, but you can argue for, you can argue against on various factors that we've seen over the last couple of years, but just another name in that kind of position, which potentially could be an upgrade in certain aspects. Nasty, though, was very good, especially at the World Cup and at the end of the season when Ghosty, his level wasn't insane. <laughs> then Illy really stepped it up at the old, Nasty, sorry, really stepped it up at the end of the year. But could Illy do a better job, maybe in even Search and Destroy? There's a question on that, but of course, there's always questions around Lily, as we've known over the last couple of years. But let's talk about this Cloud9 situation, because this is very interesting indeed. Certainly, when it comes down to Dereal, their head coach, of course, of the subliners, it's been Dereal and it's been Cinder over the last several years. And that's worked out, or the last couple of years at least, that's worked out very nicely indeed. There was lots of talk, especially after Cinder left the Optic situation, right? They ended up bringing in Rambo, now Rambo was gone, and then Karma's kind of come into effect. I mean, JP was there for a while, but that's basically what Optic have done. Cinder went to the subliners and then won the World Championship during that Modern Warfare 2 season, very impressively indeed. But Dereal was there as well, probably most notable really for being the coach that really helped Hydra get into the scene, helped teach him English, help him get a 
their customs to um, you know the way of doing things over there and in his own right has talked a lot about you know his coaching methods his coaching style and like whatever Sib said about their culture yesterday if you guys haven't seen the clip on that he said that on most days they were having to get to the office for nine in the morning so they could do effectively three hours of preparation before their scrims even started and that seemed to be the strategy that led them to World Championship glory back in 2023. Sib didn't reckon that that really works, at least in that environment. And also there's a good argument to say that you need your players to have like a reasonable morning routine. They can get up in their own right and they can, you know, hit the gym or whatever the case is. If, if you know, if they're at the office from nine till nine or whatever, 12 hour day, that can be a bit challenging, right? But whatever, you might question the methods that Dereal and others have put into place, but they have produced results. I mean, they've won events over the last couple of years. World Champions 2023 won this season. Obviously, Major Four wasn't in front of a crowd, but even then, the Grand Finals at the World Championships. So Javid said a few days ago now that... You know, there were questions on whether his contract was still going to be alive, whether it was still going to be a thing, exactly what was going on over there. And um, as he says, busy, busy month, EWC going on, you know, going to Japan next week. So, well, going to, he's in Japan right now, I'm pretty sure, while all this stuff is going down in the background. But he was definitely implying that staying on subliners was not exactly a guarantee. And as of yesterday, rumours started to emerge that Dreel is leaving Cloud9. Now, it's a little bit unclear whether they've simply not re-signed his deal which I think would be somewhat surprising given the fact that, you know, his relationship with Hydra, to our understanding, is still very strong. Maybe there's an argument that he's taught Hydra everything he needs to know and now they can just move forward with Sender as the singular coach and maybe save some money. That is definitely a talking point with Scrappy on the market that you might want to consider whether it's possible to save a few pennies here or there if you're trying to pay for a massive buyout, which apparently they are trying to do from Toronto Ultra, which I imagine is still in discussions behind the scenes as it stands. But um, yeah, Javid leaving Cloud9 would be a big deal. So it goes two potential ways. Either they're getting rid of him or he's going to leave based on another better offer elsewhere. I don't think he's going to leave and just retire and go, you know, kick his feet up, right? You know, if he, he wants to continue in that coaching role on some team and probably for very good reason indeed. So as Jake Hell says, you know, there's no real comparison between when Dereal came on as the coach, kind of like the before and after, as it were. God, I think he's got interest elsewhere. So let me share a couple of clips here, certainly from what Zuma was up to at the Flank Boys. They're talking about this whole Sib situation, but also Zuma kind of gets baited or whatever you want to say into leaking exactly where Dereal is going to go. I don't want to leak it. No, I don't want to leak it just because um just yeah, because can you type it's... it to me at least uh yeah, yeah. Oh, tommy's going ben J, dude yeah i mean i have to bro i have to i mean i tommy's wish i wish bro. i mean I, I i wish i could i mean theoretically i could just leak it because i found, i've heard it from a lot of different people but i'm, I'm i don't know that how it's not surprise. leaked that's yet i'm gonna be honest i don't know how it's not leaked. crazy that hasn't leaked like it's crazy it, it, bro crazy. it's crazy to me that the sib shit and all that stuff got leaked because i didn't know about any of that and that got Wait. leaked why? The, I'm guessing money. Just money. So, I'm so, guessing. So he's, he's I mean, just, he's just leaving to make more money. That, that's all this is. Chat. It equals money. Where do you think he's going? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, I mean, I I will say though. I mean, he he also could just want to be like the num like the head guy, Pat. No, I mean, he could just be want to be like the main is guy. He the head guy in New York or Cloud Nine. All right, fine, I mean, it's the I mean, Falcons, I mean, it's fine, it's the fucking Falcons, oh, it's leaked oh, here. Oh, it's leaked, on. it's fucking leaked. I mean, it's, 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 leak ma, leak ma. So you're definitely not going back to C9? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. I mean, I don't know how shit gets out, bro. I don't need you, bro. So the rumor has been for a little bit of time now behind the scenes and Zuma just puts it straight out there that Dereal to the Falcons is what's going to be happening here, right? And this is a pretty fascinating situation, right? It's got to be said because the Falcons, they've signed on Luti is their current head coach, right? Who was working with that core Saudi Arabian Falcons roster over the last couple of seasons or so. He's still there. They brought him on as well as their coach. So is he going to stay? And they've got another head coach coming in in Dereal. 
I mean, it's a pretty incredible situation to think about a coach of that magnitude and stature, <laughs> literally stature, because he's like six foot five. But, um, you know, Daryl, in terms of what he's achieved, actually coming into Falcons there and trying to get them to that next level. I think this is a great attempt for Falcons to try and make the roster as competitive as possible. It's quite clear that Falcons wants that Saudi team to succeed as the Saudi team of four that they have. And if it doesn't, then they will look to do something else that we'll certainly talk about right about now, I suppose. But their intention is going to be, okay, let's bring in someone as a coach who's won the world championship, knows how to get the best out of young players that don't necessarily speak English that well. Daryl has an experience of doing that with Hydra and um, may well be able to do that to some degree again with these Saudi boys. The reality is, is that team of Exnid, Roxas, Khalid and King of Body really going to you know, be able to win the world championship over the next couple of years? Probably not. And if that's not the case, then of course, well, Falcons, as they've done in either other esports, will likely try and step in and do something else in terms of making this happen, right? And that's when I think it's pretty exciting at the possibility. Well, it's exciting and it's kind of, you know, nerve wracking, I would say, for some of these other teams in the league. Because if Falcons decide to drop the bag at some point, and I imagine Javid's getting, you know, paid a decent amount to go over there and coach the roster, but, you know, whatever the monetary situation looks like, they have the cash. And if they wanted to drop the cash on signings of big name players, they're not doing it right now. They're bringing on their own Saudi team to the Vegas Falcons for next season. But if they wanted to, they definitely could. And they could bring in a Hydra, for example, over the next couple of seasons. Not out of the realms of possibility. Hydra's contract with Cloud9 would be up. Dereal would be over there at Falcons saying, hey, you know, <laughs> Hydra, you want to come in? We're going to give you even more money than they were paying you. We're going to sign X other player, Y other player, whatever. So that's definitely an interesting development. But also it's very clear from what Sib has had to say and what others have had to say, he ain't going anywhere near that Cloud9 team again right that's not going to be the case and um you know clearly there were some misunderstandings if you want to call it that behind the scenes of that roster and Sib is going to be going elsewhere as I said at the start of the video the possibility of him going to Los Angeles Thieves I don't think is out of the realms of possibility I mean we just saw what Nasty has done but then again if Sib is going to go somewhere there's going to be some sort of buyout involved in which case You've got to, you know, think that whether they've done that deal already, right? But then again, if you're thieves, you're seeing Sid become available. You might well say, all right, let's get that deal done now. Let's lock it in before Toronto. Because Toronto, they move kind of slow. Like, let's say Toronto do sell Scrappy over there to, uh, like, Cloud9. They could potentially get Sib in return. But if thieves have swooped in and said, okay, no, we're going to get Sib. And we're going to try and upgrade the firepower in that role. Then that might make a fair bit of sense. And I do, to be honest, think that Sib would be a better fit with thieves than he would be for Cloud9. The other quick indicator, I, I guess, is the fact that on that stream where Sid was talking with the other boys about the drama at Cloud9 and all this type of stuff, it was with Abizi, Ghosty, and Joe. So, you know, Joe deceives, obviously, right? So a couple of guys that are great friends, right? Abizi and Joe really tight and everything like this. But um, the idea of it was Ghosty and Joe deceives also with the call with Sid, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Whether that's a potential trio plus one, maybe, maybe somebody else for next season, right? So very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments, but it's definitely been a bit of speculation here that people have thrown around. We're assuming that FaZe and Opti are going to stay the same. Cloud9, as it stands, looks like it may well be you know, that trio staying together and then Scrap coming in is, you know, in terms of Scrap's destinations, that still seems the most likely with what he said over the last couple of weeks. Then you look at the Thieves team. I think there's no doubt that Ghosty and Joe Deceives are staying there. Sib coming in does make a fair bit of sense. And then you've got to figure out where Envoy goes, where Kleenex goes. Obviously, many would say, well, Kleenex to uh, like Cloud9 alongside Scrappy with that team would be pretty disgusting, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Of course, Kismet's been important to Hydra and to that organization over the last couple of years but losing Dreal does that change things you know I suppose that's a bit of a question right so massively intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time that is insane actually Bro, you got me showing up at 9 30 going back home to take a shower after a team workout and then we come back to do VOD then we do other shit we just keep do VOD the whole time and then you go yeah you're gonna make you play three sets I'm working nine to nine. Working <laughs> 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 nine to nine. <laughs> nine to nine. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, that shit is insane. Uh, that is insane. Gonna yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna end, I'm gonna end it there. He said I'm working a nine to nine. I mean, listen, I I will say I'm a firm believer. Yo, like, I just gotta fix that. I was your I your your mental is also a big factor of the league. Like I I don't think you should over practice and over play. Like I think what players do outside of the game is so important. Whether it's just like even if they're it's just going important. for walks or, nine, no or working meals. out or playing <laughs> having a different hobby. Like I think I think doing other things other than just revolving everything every day around COD helps you. Like I think Which I think it's good for you. Another problem with the CDL because I where I will admit there were some good introductions. You also had people coming in who have never been a pro player implementing these routines that it was just pure guesswork, right? Like, I'm not saying it wasn't, some of it wasn't good, but it's like if someone who has never been a pro player or in this pro player environment is telling me the routine I need to be on when I've been a pro player for a decade, it, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's a well, clear bro, disconnect can I, can I, can I play, Go ahead, Sam. I was just going to say, do we remember, I think it was probably midway through the year when they were struggling the most, when we said that, like, or was it, Ant? maybe there was a clip, um, when we were saying that New York, like, over-practices and was, like, trying to be too perfect and, like, trying to, in scrims, you could tell that they were trying to prepare themselves for every little scenario and all this stuff. You guys remember that conversation? Yeah. This clip literally proves all of that. It's so perfect. Twelve and we hours of for cod it? a day is fucking insane. Yeah, that's that you actually know how is mental, crazy. Listen, that's a lot. Chat, I know I'm gonna sound here sitting. Just don't. Li Twelve hours a day of Call of Duty is gonna be fucking terrible.